Hey everybody, this is Christian and let's do another Q&A video because my last one is already a few months old. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I wanted to do this a little more often, but as you probably know, I was a bit, yeah, in trouble the last weeks. I needed to take a longer break of YouTube. I already mentioned this in other videos, uh, but I actually never told you what exactly I had. Yeah, I believe I had some kind of a light version of a burnout so to say yeah i was just too much uh, stressed and i uh, was focusing too much on work and then i started to get some really yeah serious uh, issues like i got uh, pain in my neck and in my shoulders it was actually so worse that i couldn't stand or sit uh, for a couple of days and that was really horrible but as you can see i'm now in a better shape it's still not as it was before i need to take care of myself i know this but um, it's becoming better and better so i hope that i can continue making some videos but you probably will see yeah there will be a few weeks where i just don't or won't post a video that is because yeah i just yeah had some other stuff to do like spending time with my family and so on yeah this is something that i really need to focus a lot to yeah to not stress myself too much and to be in a good shape to make great videos for you guys and i also want to say Thank you for all the best wishes I, I read uh, in the YouTube comments. So there were so many um, great comments from you guys. So I just want to spend one or two minutes to read some of them. Like from DFFVP, you seem like a guy giving 100% all the time. Sometimes you just need to breathe, relax, focus, and everything will fall into place. Take care and enjoy yourself. Yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I'm always giving more than 100%. You just got a day that is 24 hours long and you need to do a main job you need to take care of your family you need to take care of yourself and you want to make great videos once a week this is a yeah this is a huge challenge yeah trust me and then yeah sometimes you you going beyond your limits of your of your own body yeah? and that's that's not a good a good habit actually yeah also Arpen master said videos can wait focus on your health bro uh, if you can spend some with nature, hope you get well soon. Take care and stay blessed. Thanks. So spend some time in the nature really uh, makes fun. Yeah, you can really relax if you just stop listening to music or stop uh, watching on your mobile phone or whatever. You yeah, just listen to the sound of the nature. Yeah, I sound like, <laughs> like a nature guy. But I'm actually not, but I enjoyed this doing the last weeks and that really, yeah, that that has brought me down to earth, I would say. That really helps a lot. Also from Paul D, health always comes first. Hope you feel better soon. Thank you so much. This is this is really awesome. And there were so many other best wishes and positive feedback and comments from you. I'm not, I can't cover them all in this uh, video, but thank you guys so much. You guys are just the best. So I just wanna give something back and answer some of your questions from the last q and I think I got just only two questions. So if you have any more questions for me, it can be a personal question. It can be a technical question. It doesn't really matter. Just put them in the comment section of this video and I will go over them in, yeah, maybe in one or two months. Yeah, when the next q and video comes out, I will answer them and yeah, go over them in a bit more detail than I can in just a simple YouTube comment. So yeah, ple please ask uh, some questions. That would be really fun, yeah. Uh, so let's go over the first question from Emriza. Um, how did you start doing videos? What was the reason? And did you think you would grow this fast? That's a really great question. And maybe I do a dedicated video at some time to show you how I actually make my videos. And um, how did you start doing videos? Yeah, that is really simple to answer because I just started. I didn't really think about it that much, yeah? I just um, watched some of the other bigger tech YouTubers here, yeah, like Network Chuck, for example. He's one of the guys who inspired me to, to make my own videos or Live Overflow. If you know him, also a German guy who does really great in-depth hacking videos. So really amazing. And I thought, hey, I know a little bit um, about IT, so why not make my own videos yeah, and start growing a community so that I actually didn't thought this through. Yeah, I just started somehow and then it turns out to be yeah, a great way of, um, yeah, express myself and share my knowledge. And because you guys are liking it, I, I will continue doing it. it. It makes a lot of fun. And um, to the next part of this question, um, did you think you would grow this fast? No, 
uh, it was really a surprise. I actually don't know if this is really fast to grow or how long it usually takes to grow a YouTube channel. I have no idea. Yeah, I just try to, to do what I like and it turns out that you enjoy it and uh, the channel is growing hopefully fast, so <laughs> that's great. As long as I can see a consistent growth, I'm really happy, yeah. Okay, so let's go over the next question. Uh, what uh, from Daryl K. Harris, what do you think of Trueness scale? Yeah, I think I made um, a separate video about it. To be honest, I didn't work with Trueness scale for quite some time. I just use it as my daily driver, as um, a network share on my storage server. You probably have seen the video, hopefully. If you don't, go and watch it. Uh, but um, I could also just use Trueness Core. First, I was a bit too excited about it and thought, oh, this is going to change the way how I'm using my home lab and so on. But actually, it turns out, no. Um, I think Trueness Scale is still a great, a great system. But I think the important part of Trueness is the core, yeah, the, the storage part. And the Kubernetes application part is a nice to have feature on top of this. Maybe for people who just run one single server and just put Trueness scale on this machine, that's great. Or for companies who really want to scale out storage servers in a, in a large fashion. But uh, for HomeLab, I think, yeah, I actually don't use it so often that I could, yeah. That were all the questions from the last Q&A video, but I won't stop here. I will go over some of the comments that I read on some recent videos that I think are worth discussing. Here is one from Nicholas Reynolds. Did I miss the explanation of how to actually install and use OpenSSL Suite? I am a noob, but I thought this was for noobs. I guess I would have to go elsewhere. Sick of videos promising you will understand and then not explaining. Uh, literally says, to not install crap you don't know and you, ah, to summarize it. So this guy is a bit uh, disappointed because I didn't explain how to install OpenSSL. Well, I just want to say one thing about this because I think this is important for other people as well when you're watching my videos. So uh, my demand on making this video is, is not to make a walkthrough guide for the, the complete beginner, yeah? Just like I would make video tutorials that go over step one please start your PC. Step two is log into your PC. Step three is click on this button and step four, and so I can go on, yeah. Um, this is actually not the reason why I'm making videos, yeah. The reason why I'm making videos is I wanna educate you as tech enthusiasts and IT professionals, yeah. And I think you are kind of responsible for looking up the things yourself. And so I'm not going to present you everything. Yeah, you, you see, we are spending that much time on technology learning and uh, improving our skills and knowledge. That's what it's all about. So when I don't explain some of the basic stuff here, th th then go and watch another video or go and find out yourself. Yeah, I'm not here to, to give you the answer to everything. Yeah, I probably will help you and point you in the right direction. That is my mission but uh, I'm not going to do all the work for you. You need to do a little work yourself. <laughs> That's just how it is in IT. Next from me, you. Oh, there's another <laughs> slightly negative uh, touch to this. A fantastic video, wish there was a way to turn the very annoying background music off. <laughs> yeah, I read this a lot and I understand when people are annoyed by YouTubers' background music. To be honest, I thought a lot about if I should turn off my music in the videos, but if I think about it, I just like it. I, I like to watch videos with a little background music, and if it's not too loud, I think it's not really distracting you from the video. And that's just my style, yeah? So you need to live with it, okay? <laughs> Um, next, a question from Islam Shuhaili. Oh, I, I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm sorry, mate. How do you get into DevOps? Promote it in the same company or jump into another company? I think I could make a dedicated video about this topic as well because I, I tried both in my IT career. So I started to get promoted within the same company for quite some time, but I also switched companies like three times. And there were always reasons why I did this, yeah. Um, I always like to be in the same company. If you enjoy the company you're working for, there's a good chance you get promoted, then why not do this? This is absolutely right. But if you wanna change directions, or also if you wanna raise your salary, um, there's really a better way instead of getting promoted and this is just switching companies because you will 
um, you will get a much higher increase of your revenue when you switch a company. If you just get promoted, you probably get like if, yeah, one or two hundred dollars extra. And maybe if you switch positions, this is a case where you get slightly higher increase while staying in the same company. So this is when I was promoted from like a support engineer to a technical account manager. I got a pretty high increase of my, my salary, but um, I think I could even go further than that, much further than that, when I would switch companies. Yeah, when I just would quit my job now and I would start uh, seeking out for another role. Yeah, maybe as a solution architect or as a DevOps engineer, whatever. I think I would maybe even double my salary that I, I earn now. Yeah, so that, that is what you need to take in consideration. But I also believe there are a lot of valid reasons not to accept such opportunities and stay where you are, especially when you are at a point in life where I am right now. So I'm I'm already stressed and I'm already yeah, uncomfortable with uh, new things and uh, taking challenges in my life. So I'm not going to switch jobs right now. This would be yeah, another way into a burnout situation for me. So I'm, I'm pretty happy where I am. Uh, but if you want to take another direction, let's go back a little more to the question. If you want to go into DevOps and you are in a complete different position, then I believe it's it's easier to take a challenge if you're ready for it and switch companies than get promoted and, and search for a position within your organization. That is sometimes even harder. Yeah, so that is what, it, what my experience is at least about it. I hope that answers the question. There's another one from uh, TipDub. Is the end of the use of X64 by Apple important for you? So this is regarding my latest switch to the MacBook Air that I got here behind me. So as you probably know, I'm now switching or kind of switching operating systems again. So I'm stepping into the Mac world now. Um, it's, um, it's something retaining me to buy an Apple Silicon computer because I would like that I can virtualize Windows X64 with good performance for around 2000 euros. Yeah, so that is something, well, I actually haven't thought about a lot, to be honest. I just bought this Apple computer with an ARM-based chip, so this Apple Silicon chips. And I, I didn't know what will happen yeah, if I'm able to use all the programs that I want to use or if I'm into trouble. I actually didn't try using Windows uh, via Parallels yet, but I will. And probably there will be more content around x86, x64 um, architecture versus ARM or my experience and how to visualize it on this MacBook Air. So we will see how that um, goes out. But for me, it wasn't really a factor. And it also turns out I can run anything on this MacBook that I want. So for me, it's not something that's limiting me in any way. So it's not holding me back. So and honestly, I believe there is a much more successful future in ARM-based chips than it is in x86 architecture, to be honest, yeah. Um, we will see if Intel and AMD can compete with ARM, but ARM is very popular right now. Even in cloud environments, you probably also read that AWS or Amazon's cloud environment already offers you to run ARM-based servers in the cloud. So there is a lot of demand in the professional IT world regarding ARM-based uh, architectures. So we will see a lot of news in the next years, I believe. Okay, I guess that were all the interesting comments. I just skipped some of the silly I use Arch, by the way, Linux uh, feedback stuff regarding my MacBook Air, as always. <laughs> actually thought a lot about if I should make a video regarding li the Linux community and some of the stuff that is going on there. But to be honest, I don't. I just don't want to be part of that fight. I, I just will focus more on the stuff that matters to me, that is important for me, and this is home lab and professional IT. This is just where my, my main profession is. This is where my main interest is. So this is where I will focus and yeah, I, I think that was everything that I wanted to discuss for today. I, I hope you're up for the next Q&A video. So again, please put questions below. Otherwise, we don't have any, any content to talk about. And that would be really sad. So I really want to make these videos for you guys. And I hope you enjoyed this content. And I will catch you in the next Q&A video. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.